And it is a real pleasure to be joined on The Bigger Picture this evening by Tony Jashenmal, a director of the legendary Jashenmal Group here in the Gulf. Tony Jashenmal, many, many thanks indeed for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. Jashenmal needs no introduction to most people here in the Gulf, but in case you're new to town, it is one of the leading retailers and distributors here in the Gulf, founded almost 100 years ago in Iraq and now with operations across the region and you're responsible for for many of those operations can we begin by talking first of all about the retail side of your operations now we know that that took a bit of a hit over the past couple of years reading comments of yours from um, summer last year at a a reuters event you talked about uh, all retail sales fell a bit but luxury goods sales fell about 40 45 percent during the economic downturn how have things been since then, six, eight months later? Actually, the things have um, not gotten any worse at all. They've, they've actually got slightly better. What actually happened in the fall was that a lot of tourists who used to come here uh, stopped coming. And, of course, most people living in the area were uncertain about the future. Things have not got worse in the last year or so, if you take the whole Gulf. And um, so things had, uh, the businesses had bottomed out. The luxury sector actually has picked up a little bit again. We have a new uh, group of tourists, some of them like the Indians and the Persians, uh, they didn't take as big a hit, so they were they were there always. But we've had, for instance, uh, a lot more new um, visitors from China. And they, just like they're doing in Europe, are actually making up for a great amount of sales which were lost to other countries. So where do you position yourselves now as one of the largest retailers and also distributors in the region? I mean, some of the, the brands that you have partnerships with, Burberry of London, Calvin Klein, Davidoff, Porsche Design at a slightly lower level, uh, Clark's, the mid-market footwear chain. I mean, we, we could go on for hours read, reading this list. Where do you go from here as a retailer? Okay, you've got 91 years of, of history behind you, but to an extent that counts for nothing over the next 90 years, doesn't it? You've, you've got to constantly start reinventing the brand and, and reinventing the way that, that you sell these goods, don't you? Um, sh- yes, sure. Uh, We have actually four different directions. One is our own department stores where we sell a variety of products, a lot of it concentrating on the household and electrical products. Um, Then we have specialty stores, like we have luggage stores, we have shoe stores, we have book stores, which are just specialized on a particular product. The third is specialized again, but under franchise names like Clark's and Calvin Klein, etc. And then we have a fourth type, which is joint ventures. Uh, With Burberry, for instance, we are a joint venture. So the participation and the investment is both from the side of Burberry as as it is with us. And this, so these are four distinctive types of uh, retail businesses that we have. And we have specialized people for all these and we don't see that we have to substitute one for the other, and therefore we are expanding them all depending on where we see the uh, market best placed at that moment. And where do you think that market is best placed? Dubai, of course, traditionally has been the retail hub of the region, particularly for the foreign travellers that you mentioned, Russians, Indians, Iranians, Chinese. But it's still a small city of just one and a half million people. In Gulf terms, it it is relatively tiny. Saudi Arabia, of course, dominates this market. But where will you be focusing your attention over the next five or ten years? Well, um, the biggest attention will probably always go, apart from Dubai, where you have such a big tourist traffic. Otherwise, you uh, concentrate where there is a very big local population because the local population is the one which uh, which has the higher um, uh, income and the m- m- most of the businesses are owned by local uh, citizens uh, therefore the 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 concentration of the higher incomes is with the local people so you do have a big 
market wherever the local po- uh, population is big. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, um, uh, and uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, the UAE in general, but Abu Dhabi in particular, and Qatar with time. So we see that in all these markets, the luxury market is actually growing and growing uh, and will grow because of the higher income and the higher education and the higher awareness of 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 um, of the pro- good quality product so you've got all these macro forces and you look at where the hot spots are and i understand that but how about in a bit more if you like granular detail Looking at your website, it talks about Jashamal being founded as a group, you know, almost 100 years ago. And there was, for the first 50 or 60 years, you basically whatever you could supply to the region, people would buy because everything was in short supply. But you know better than I that it's a completely different game now. It's so much more competitive. Yes, your stores are, are very nice and they're in the same shopping malls, but there are so many other great retailers out there clamouring for our attention. So what do you do if you like to differentiate Jashamal to make sure that, that when we're all going shopping and looking for some nice luxury goods as tourists or as people who live here, whatever, that, that you lure us into your shops. How do you make the, the retail experience, the shopping experience, if you like, special enough to compete with, you know, your Harvey Nichols and, and your Galleries Lafayette, which are all, you know, great experienced retailers? Um, sure. The, uh, there are two things we always depend on, and one was... Uh, quality of personalized service that you have to give. And the second thing is getting products or putting value for money as your principal. Now, so it doesn't mean that only the higher price products are always of good quality. As far as we're concerned, we're very, very concerned about the quality of the products that we sell. That's one. The second thing is Having been in the area for a long time, we actually try to um, to localize our product. That means we look at the local requirement of the area or of the different cities. Cities are very different in the Gulf. So the, the local requirements do become very different between the countries. We see that sometimes the big retailers, if you have, I won't name the names, but the big international ones, they usually get to have a generic look, which is their advantage, which is their economy of scale. And sometimes you feel in some of them that many of the products that have, that are presented are not really, were not really picked and chosen just for this area. So there is this, the localization and because of being here for a long time, the, the third factor that plays a part with us is the loyalty factor, that people are used to you, they've been used to your service, and therefore trust you to be uh, a good supplier to them. We're talking with Tony Jashamal, director of the Jashamal Group here in the Gulf. More from him as part of our Bigger Picture interview in three or four minutes' time.